Hello, my soccer universe. Those Champions League nights and Europa League nights with all that condensed is a little bit oh, doing something with me. Not getting enough sleep with those. It's two tenths of a schedule. I'm really looking forward to the international break because I get a breather, honestly. But you know, I, I also enjoy watching it. It's just, yeah, it just doesn't work out the way it probably should. So have to see how I will hang on for the Europa League uh, tonight. Champions League. Uh, this week, I think we had a few really interesting storylines. I think the Tuesday games, I mean, there was the two escapes by the Madrid teams who got a whole lot of more than it was initially expected. There was the really interesting Atalanta Ajax clash. If you like offensive style soccer, that's all you were waiting for. And then the two storylines on Wednesday for was of course yeah there was no Ronald, Ronaldo Messi matchup um, because Ronaldo still didn't uh, test positive or maybe he he uh, still didn't test negative but maybe he still tests negative but it's a little bit up up in the air he was not playing and no Ronaldo and Barcelona parties and then of course the huge English wins without being convincing at all. I mean, these were two games that suddenly completely went one way and it never ever looked like that. Right. Uh, yeah, and then the last story, uh, story line, I mean, Wednesday's games, there were some in there, four that were an attack on the ice, a veritable attack on the ice on what they were playing. Nike pushing the third Georgers. They couldn't do it really do it on Tuesday. So on Wednesday, we went all out. We need to wear our third jerseys. That's why this slightly weird colored Barcelona away jersey is hanging up there in my gallery. Uh, but I decided to wear the Barcelona home jersey. Oh, let my wife decide to wear. <laughs> she said, it's easier. You already have this up there. Wear this one uh, for this video. So yeah, uh, let's go through the results. Then we see how chances are distributed at the moment. And uh, in, in, in the end, we look at the table favorites and what's up next week. Before we go into the national break. Bayern dominated as you would expect. Lok Moscow for the longest of times took a deserved lead through Goretzka. I think they hit even once the post uh, might be. But then towards the end Miranchuk suddenly gets an equalizer and then uh, Lok was pressing for a win. Had chances for, for a win but Joshua Kimmich said no not with us and uh, slams it in 2-1 for Bayern. They get the win that they overall deserved. Um, with Schachter and Inter, you know, this was the Europa League semi-final where Inter just rolled over Schachter. It was not to happen this time, although Inter was largely a bad team, had more chances. But um, the setup didn't seem quite right and Inter cannot find the breakthrough. And yeah, maybe they didn't deserve it because, I mean, that, that game was also an attack on the ice because those were two of the worst jerseys, but none of the special third jerseys. Um, in the late games, I mean, the first one, Atletico Madrid against Salzburg. Atletico at the half should have probably led by two or three goals. They get only one through Marcos Llorente. And then Soboslai, more or less out of nowhere, gets the equalizer again with one of his trademark nice shots. Uh, I'm still, he's probably the best player in the Austrian league at, uh, at, at the moment, but I'm not so convinced of him overall. I, I don't know. Then Felipe scores an own goal in the 47th and Salzburg has a shock lead. Uh, out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere. Uh, however, Joao Felic had an amazing game, I have to say. I mean, whenever you saw something happening, it was over Joao Felic, who the Germans call, of course, jo uh, Joao Felix, which does not compute at all. At all. Uh, he gets the equalizer in the 52nd. And the game in the second was a lot more open. But in the end, Joao Felic scores his second goal uh, to get the win for Atletico Madrid. That was deserved, but was a whole lot more work. I mean, at the time, drop points would not have done well for Atletico Madrid. It would be huge for Salzburg, to be honest. Um, but they escape that scare and get a deserved win. The other Madrid team also gets an escape and also probably was a deserved result because um, Gladbach, and can I say this... I know this is for the Bundesliga jerseys. The Gladbach jerseys this season are just, they don't look like Gladbach jerseys. I mean, uh, you have this black Champions League jersey, which actually looks nice, but then you have a sponsor with blue. And the Gladbach has green. 
there should be some green in there for crying out loud. I, I, this really drives me nuts. And I'm not even a Gladbach fan, it just drives me nuts why they cannot get this done properly. Um, so Real Madrid actually, you know, um, is having more more of the game, but they are caught twice on, on the counter by Thuram. Twice, I think, not offside. Uh, the first one, really nice ball across for a player. The, sec the second one, also, is by, 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 by a player. Uh, also, very nice, nicely done. And you really think that Gladbach can get that win because uh, that 2-0 took the life out of Real Madrid a little bit. However, they bring on, you know, the Azar, Modric, Rodrigo, so, you know, they, they bring the full force. And Bonsema in the 87th gets uh, a, a goal and then Casemiro in stoppage time after Sergio Ramos. And, you know, having Sergio Ramos in the Real Madrid squad, I didn't emphasize on, on it too much because that was uh, also a factor for the Clásico. He was not there at the bad performances, but having uh, Sergio Ramos in your squad really, really, really helps Real, Real Madrid. He might not be up there um, defensively any, anymore, but he is just such a presence for them that this will eventually always see them through. So yeah, uh, two Madrid escapes on uh, Tuesday, more, more or less. Um, Porto had no trouble with Olympiacos, um, with Viara already scoring in, in the 11th and then very late to Sergio Oliveira by Musa Marega, which is probably my favorite Porto player, I have, I have to say. I, I, I just like that guy a lot. Yeah, uh, no problem, no problem also for City over Marseille. I mean, they just bossed them around. Uh, rather disappointing, I have, have to say. I think uh, given that Lyon could beat uh, Man City, um, it kind of seems like you were thinking that it could be some no, absolute domination by Manchester City. Uh, Ferran Torres in the 18th after De Bruyne assist already and then Gundogan gets a goal after Raheem Sterling assist and Sterling then gets his and De Bruyne assists as well. It uh, was very, very, very easy for Man City this one. Atalanta Ajax. Um, I wish I could have seen more of it. I probably should have said I'm on, on, only going to watch this. Uh, from what I hear, it really delivered on all, all accounts. Two teams that can go forward in attack, maybe not that sole sol sol defense, but really uh, ce celebrating the offensive play. It took over 30 minutes to get a goal, Tadic, and threw a penalty non nonetheless, but yeah, it was a rather clumsy challenge by ah. Golsons there. Yeah. And then it was Torre, the guy who uh, scored five and assisted three in the 13-0 beating that gets a 2-0 for Ajax, and I'm thinking, whoa, is Ajax really going to surprise us again? I mean, Ajax is... Having a surprisingly strong team this season, the one that I didn't expect because none of the big guys that uh, two seasons ago um, gave us such a great uh, feel. Most of them are, are, are not there anymore, but they really did good uh, transfers and, and so on. They can keep it up. They had a very competitive team out there. And yeah, they had Atalanta on the brink because, I mean, if they would have won at Atalanta, that would have put them again in a driver's seat to advance. Yes, they had this last season as well, but now they have uh, Midtjylland coming up where you would expect them to get uh, six points and really pull a stamp on this group when Atalanta has to play Liverpool twice. However, Atalanta seemingly re real estate and said, no, we cannot go down and within 15 minutes. Zapata scored twice, once assisted by uh, Papo Gomez, once by Pas Pasalic, and were actually then pressing for, for, for the win. 2-2, two, two, all that you would expect, maybe I would have said 3-3 three or 4-4 three, three or four was probably in there as well. But, you know, uh, thoroughly entertaining game, which we cannot say about Liverpool. Yes, they played the kids. Uh, I mean... Uh, Klopp did, he said, as Midtjylland, we don't need to uh, play the big stars up, uh, up front. So if you see the lineup with um, Regi, Minamino, Shakiri, and Jota uh, on, on, on the front, that tells the story. And, you know, Minamino was quite, kind of amazing for Salzburg, but he cannot find a footing in this Liverpool side, which means it's really a huge step up for him as well. And yeah, they without being in any way convincing, they get the win through Jota, a uh, nice assist by Alexander Arnold, and then late Salah converts a penalty. Yes, he came on and Firmino came on, you know, and Mane came on. You need to give a little bit so uh, to show that you take them, you give them a little bit of um, exercise <laughs> that they are fresh. And then let's go to the eyesores. I mean, both Early matchup between Krasnodar and Chelsea, and especially Bajakshi and PSG, were horrible to watch. What 
I mean, the Krasnodar, the black jerseys are all right, although I really would like to see some uh, a green with Krasnodar. But then the neon socks were already, and then Chelsea playing with this away kit, or oh, third kit by Nike uh, in pink and blue. Nah, nah. It was hard work for Chelsea. Uh, they missed the penalty through Jorginho. Uh, and you know, uh, Krasnodar always hung in there, but then Hudson Adoy makes the goal, uh, give them the lead, and the goalkeeper did not look good on, uh, on there. And then Krasnodar actually could have well gotten the equalizer. It was always more the Krasnodar gets, gets the equalizer, but you know, then uh, give away a penalty. Timo Werner can uh, co co convert it, uh, and then Zieg, um Scores his first goal, it's 3 0, and then stops the police, which adds a fourth one. Krasnoda basically disintegrating uh, in front of our eyes. Um, Bajakshe here had PSG actually in a way where they wanted Neymar coming on uh, with an in in injury early, early on. And again, this jersey is orange against this dark red or whatever. I don't even think it was that great of a contrast. Why can't PSG play there in their white jerseys? They would have worked just fine. No, they need to. I'm sure this is Nike pushing this jersey, which uh, yes, looks potentially even pleasing to the eyes. Uh, color, but it's not a PSG jersey. This is again one of those. But you know, don't get me started there. Uh, whenever they saw, I mean, as they were more on the Chelsea game, but uh, I have to say, whenever uh, they showed, I always thought the project could pull maybe a little upset here, at least get it, getting a draw. But then, you know, Moise Ken, Mbappe sets him up, uh, the defenders are not really looking after him and he lifts the ball up and slams in his home, 64th of uh, 1-0. And then, and ah, the, the, uh, ahead of him, uh, well, was, it was very easy, they lost him. And then the second goal is what I just described in the 79th to give them the win. PSG uh, has the points now. Then, uh, of the later games, I have to say Sevilla Stadren, I saw very, very, very little except the Stadren, why didn't they play in red? Yes, the black worked fine, but red. Uh, Sevilla gets the win through Luc de Jong goal, uh, thoroughly deserved. Club Rouge against Lazio. Um, Lazio had, I think, 10 players missing through COVID. I mean, not all um, top players, but that was another attack on, on the ice. Those neon green kits by Lazio just don't make much sense to me. You should get a white one, a white one, not neon. But you know, against the black and blue, maybe it didn't seem all, all, all the bad. Korea gives them the lead, and I think for the first half hour or so, I, whenever they thought they said Lazio is better, but Club Bruch got back into the game, get a penalty that Van Aken can convert in the second half, it was actually more Bruch. I mean, Milinkovic had a big chance, but it was actually Bruch who were pushing more for the win. Dortmund, war of attrition. I mean, having possession, oh, not many chance, but really grinding them down. Artem Juba came up at halftime, and when Mostovoy came on, that gave Zenit a little bit more creativity up front, but still not much happening. And then penalty, Sancho converts, Holland late after assist by Bellingham gets the second, and Dortmund also are back in business. Fernsvaj, uh, Dynamo Kiev was maybe the least glamour tie here, but Dinamo Kiev penalty, uh, Tsigankov in 28th, the Depenya gets uh, even the second one, it's 2-0, you think Dinamo Kiev is cruising, but something must have happened because Ferenc Varos playing in black and green, also something I did not <laughs> quite understand, uh, but at least it, they also were not ugly, ugly, let's put it that way. They come back and really were pushing, the Goyan gets a quick yeah, 59th minute goal, and then very late Bully gets the equalizer uh, after Sidorczuk had already been sent off. Of course, we have to talk uh, Juve Barcelona. If you just look at the pure game facts, you will think, wow, Juve was unlucky. They had three goals by Morata taking off uh, by offside in the 15th, 30th and 55th. But those were basically the only shots on goal. Barcelona, who oh, played, of course, in pink. I was even thinking, um, when I saw the PSG and what Chelsea, I'm sure the Barcelona is going to play in pink, of course. At least they didn't pull out the teal socks this time. <laughs> teal socks, that's why I have it here. Dembele, deflected shot by Chiesa, gives uh, Barcelona the lead, but from the get-go, Barcelona was storming onto the Juve goal. I mean, Juve had no midfield, Barcelona walked right through, uh, and the only thing you can really blame them for is that they didn't convert their chances. This should. This was every bit of a route 
except for the, re the, the result that Messi then late on gives them the um, a penalty to make the score and 2-0. That was way too late. They should have been, I mean, Griezmann alone had two uh, great chances. Yes, Griezmann was playing. Demiral was sent off in the 85th. But this was a game where everyone expected goals, 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 because, you know, uh, Barcelona cannot defend, have, have, not, have not PK. And also the Juve defense, uh, you know, there was no... Uh, um, Chiellini, Bonucci and whatever, whatever, so you were expecting goals, but it was all Barcelona. Maybe Bartomeu stepping down, haven't really talked about them, freed them up a little bit. It should not, but, you know, maybe. And then another one of those weird English wins where Manchester United, you know, uh, Leipzig is out possessing them, but have no penetration going forward, no punch. And uh, Pogba plays a great pass to Greenwood, who is marginally not offside. It makes it 1-0 for United at, at, at the half. And it's a typical United game. Hanging back and letting the opponent come and then hitting, hitting them on the counter-attack. But for most of the time, it did not really work. And again, Nagelsmann dazzling us with uh, one of his suits. The game really then changed when McTominay, Rashford and Fernandes came on. Uh, that really hit Leipzig up because now they had the punch going forward. And uh, it did not help that Sabitz and Sörloth came I mean, that was the other thing. Leipzig didn't even put on what I think is their best squad. Bruno Fernandes sets up Rashford for, for the first goal again. March and not offside. Uh, make it 2-0, uh, 3-0. Similar story. Ra Ra Rashford, then I get a penalty. I thought Rashford will take it. No, but he gives it to Martial. And then Rashford makes his hat-trick. Absolute uh, amazing result. Not necessarily an amazing performance, but... Once Rashford gets going, and that kid has, has got actually a lot going for him when I'm just, just thinking about feed, him feeding the kids. Uh, Manchester United, the way they play in Europe, uh, it's not great, but it's effective so so, so far. And if they can hold this uh, counter-attacking st strategy, I really think they can do a lot of damage this season in Europe, although I would not put them in there for teams that can win it. So... After all that, the standings, uh, you see a few changes in Group A, we have Atletico now in second place, so everything, the two big boys will move out of that one. Group B is wide open, that's probably the most wide open group out, out there, and this round did not do anything to resolve that issue. Um, Schachter in strongest position, then Inter ahead of uh, Real Madrid. If Gladbach would have won that, I would put them in a very strong position. City will move through, and I think Porto now, them beating Olympiacos with a bit in Marseille, seems like that Porto is the team to go through there. Uh, Liverpool got the two wins already, so they will make it out of the group too. Uh, Atalanta still having a slight advantage over Ajax, but let's see how that will go. Um, yes, Ajax has not been very good at home, so the last game is Ajax against Atalanta. That could be an exciting, decisive game. In Group E, now the big boys are on top and now clearly favor to move on. Uh, group F is another relatively open one where uh, suddenly Dortmund uh, is given good chances, but mainly due to the rating, Lazio ahead of Club Bruges. Um, you would still think that Lazio is the best team in there. Now they can play it twice against Zenit, so uh, that should give them some points. Should. You never know with Lazio. And with all that COVID stuff, and also, you know, with Lazio having so many COVID cases, it might be that they now infect some of the Krill Prus players and it all will go haywire. Despite being totally outclassed by Barcelona, Juve is still favorites to move on. I mean, they won the tough game in Kiev already, so it will be Barca there. And then Group H, uh, also anyone guess, but uh, Leipzig maybe not looking good. And now the Leipzig PSG games, they will be of interest for sure, because that will uh, go a long way deciding who will move out of this group. Uh, favorites. On top, not much changed. Bayern, City, Barcelona, Liverpool. And except for Bayern, you would not really think that any one of these is really making a run. But it will be a weird season. And then there's a lot of change changing up. Atletico moving Sunday up. Chelsea's moving up. United actually fall, falling down because they're, they're in a tougher group. So um, we got to see. I, I want to point out Ajax is also back in there. So let's see where this is going. Uh, next round. A little bit more interesting, guys. I'm... Real Madrid Inter, I mean, that's a big name matchup. I actually think Salzburg Bayern could be interesting. Of course, Atalanta Liverpool. I think Real Inter and Atalanta Liverpool are the standard ties uh, on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, 
who, yeah, Leipzig PSG, I think. I mean, there's a little bit with Chelsea, Rennes, because there's a good connection, goalkeeper and so on in there. But other than that, Club Bruges, Dort, Dortmund, I think, is a slipper uh, that Dortmund better get something out of. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games um, this midweek. And yeah, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get, I get updated whenever something is happening in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!